first nationalization and later globalization. And to reach the relevant human community that anybody would want to talk to was very expensive. First with mechanical presses and folding machines, then with large radio towers, television, mainframes, satellite. The core organizing principle was that you needed high capitalization in order to be effective. Just like you could be a hobbyist and build cars on the weekend, but were constrained from communicating by the cost of an assembly line, so too you could be a hobbyist communicator creator uh, 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 on the weekend, but the cost of effective communication and production of something that, really, that could really be communicated around um, uh, was very high. What we see in the networked information economy is a radical decentralization of the physical capital necessary to communicate, store, and process information, as well as to capture and store it. These are these machines, and these machines, and all of the other little video machines that you're holding uh, uh, at me as, as, as we're talking. The physical capital for communication, computation, storage, sensing, and capture is widely distributed in the population. And at the same time, the human capabilities that are absolutely central to what it is to be creative and innovative themselves are also widely distributed in the population. Creativity, wisdom, insight, perspective. We think of genius as something unique. We understate the importance of perspective, of simply having had the life experience that makes you look at something in a certain way that's different from how other people see it and then can teach it. 